Hey everyone, it's a great day for some mathematics. What do you say? Today I'm going to teach you a lesson about association, how two variables are related to each other. Let's get started. So let's learn what it means for two variables to be associated in statistics. Association. Does dark chocolate make you smarter? I sure hope so. Look at this article that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2012. It's a scatter plot. There's an X and a Y axis, and they plotted points, here represented by flags, to represent countries. So on the x-axis we have chocolate consumption, and it's adjusted for population, it's kilogram per capita per year. And on the y-axis we have Nobel laureates per capita, so that's also adjusted for population. A Nobel laureate, by the way, is a Nobel Prize winner. So the y-axis is the number of Nobel Prize winners in the population. The number of Nobel Prize winners might be a measurement of how intelligent the country is. So take a look. This graph displays an upward trend. It appears that as chocolate consumption is increasing, the number of Nobel laureates is also increasing. This is called a positive or direct association. Since it appears roughly linear, like a straight diagonal line, we can call this a positive correlation between the two variables. The word correlation is reserved for linear associations. As we see in the image, the p-value indicated significance. P was less than 0 .0001. And remember, the lower the p-value, the more unlikely our results were due to chance alone, right? So this was a significant result. And as we'll learn soon, the r-value on this graph, which is 0 0.791, that tells us there's a fairly strong relationship between these two variables. So what's really going on here? Are we to conclude that a country's chocolate consumption is increasing the intelligence of its population? The answer is, we don't know. We cannot draw a conclusion beyond the existence of a correlation or association. Here's a common saying in the world of statistics. Correlation does not equal causation. The idea is that there may be a real relationship between the two variables, but that does not mean that one causes the other. So what should we think when we look at a graph like this? Here are some questions that come to my mind. Why were only these countries displayed? Including more countries may drastically change the plot. Could it be that wealthier countries can afford more chocolate and spend more on education? Could top scholars native to countries such as China, Brazil, Japan, etc. be relocating to other countries to pursue their education and do their research? Or could it just be a coincidence? According to these graphs, Lack of pirates leads to global warming, and ice cream sales are driving the murder rate through the roof. These are great examples of correlation does not equal causation. And these are actual relationships. So when a significant association is determined, here's the following scenarios that we should consider. One, there could be a direct cause and effect relationship. There could be a reverse cause and effect relationship. There could be a confounding variable or a common response relationship. There could be a complexity of interrelationships among the variables. That's what I think is most likely going on in the chocolate versus Nobel Prize winners graph. Or the observed relationship is coincidental. The only source of fully convincing evidence of a cause and effect relationship is a well-designed experiment that includes the four elements, the four principles of design, randomization, control, comparison, and replication. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you had a great time doing math with me. Don't forget to subscribe to my videos on YouTube. Click the bell for the notifications so that you can get every video as it's released and continue your journey, your exploration through the world of mathematics. What an exciting time it is to be a student. I'll see you next time. May the math be with you.